Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is part seven of my DIY solar. I just wanted to show you real quick that I got everything done before my first inspection. I went ahead and installed all the warning labels. This is the combiner box. Warning labels on there. Now with this type of system, you don't really need labels on all the conduit, but I went ahead and did it anyway. Why not? And labels on the junction box. Some more labels on the conduit. I have all of the conduit secured. I didn't have that done before. But I got all those secured. And added in a couple more right here. This is the cover that goes inside the combiner box. And those are next to the those labels go next to each of the breakers. So I'll take you out back and show you the warning labels back there. Okay, so now we're at the main panel. Start off over here. A label for the solar meter. And the labels on the disconnect, which in a microinverter setup, the AC disconnect is also the rapid shutdown. There's no DC disconnect. And then the labels that go on the main panel. And even put one on the main service meter. Because I figure if you have too many, then that's not going to hurt anything. But if you don't have enough, then yeah, you will. That, they won't be happy about that. And here's a few more labels inside the main panel. Since I am derating the main breaker, I have to put that one there. And then one next to the solar breaker. And that's inside the main panel there. So I got all my labels from pvlabels.com. I will put a link in the description. I know this video is short, but just wanted to show you the finishing touches. Uh, still have to have SRP come out to unplug the meter so I can change out the main breaker and we can do our first inspection. After that, I can install the panels on the roof. Well, I guess I better also add in this video that uh, I did flip over the in-phase microinverters. Thanks, Jim Conklin, for pointing that out to me. I hate you. Go watch somebody else's videos. No, but seriously, uh, I appreciate it. Uh, read the instructions all the way through. Don't just kind of skim over it and think you got it because uh, I definitely missed that and Jim pointed that out to me. But it was not fun flipping all these over. Uh, the easiest way to do it was to unplug the entire cable, take it all off, flip them, and then have to rerun the cables. This section was the first section I did, so the cable does look better than it started with. So that's one plus. But uh, coming out of the Solidex, I 
off ran the cables just enough to where they were before the first time so they didn't quite reach so i had to relocate the and the microinverters just a little bit not terribly happy about that that kind of sucked but here's another tip that i forgot to add in when you order this q cable for the microinverters you can choose it in landscape or portrait the portrait is a little bit shorter in between these plugs. So if you notice, there's a little bit extra slack in between them. However, when you're running from here up like that, you don't have an extra plug that's just going to waste that you paid for because it's they charge by the plug. It's like $16 per plug. So if you're just having to plug it in the middle because it doesn't reach, you're wasting a plug. Plus you also have to buy another piece to plug that so that water doesn't get into it. So just do yourself a favor, get the landscape. You'll have a little bit of extra cable to deal with in order to secure and get off the roof deck, but uh, it makes it a whole lot easier. So that does it for part seven. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share for more I Can Do It Myself videos.